Praise be Jesus Christ. I'm Father Joseph Marie, uh, the novice master here at the Carmelite Monastery. And this morning, I'm going to be speaking with you about uh, Carmelite novitiate, uh, especially uh, initial formation, the period of time from when a young man enters until he makes his first vows. Um, as novice master, yeah, it's relevant to my job. <laughs> so I'll be introducing you into um, some of the elements. And I thought a good way to organize um, just speaking about this, is to try to answer a few questions. Questions of who, questions of what, questions of how, and why. So, okay, let's begin with who. The primary formator is God. God and the Blessed Virgin Mary are the primary formators of our postulants and novices. <clears throat> because when you think about it, what we're trying to accomplish through formation is not just a human work, right? We're developing um, knowledge in response to a charism that God's implanted in our souls. And so we really need the help of the Holy Spirit, the help of God. Now, they use human instruments, obviously, in our life in the monastery. And I uh, uh, try to humbly be the instrument of God and Our Lady in the formation of postulants and novices. Um, I try to act as an instrument uh, not just an instrument, though, a real true father uh, to the postulants and novices, um, instructing them in the particular charism and helping them to make progress in virtue, in prayer, um, in learning the life, and in discernment in general, because we want to do God's will. So that's our first objective. But I don't, thanks, thanks be to God, I don't have to do this alone. I have um, officially assigned assistants um, Brother John, who helps me with the novices. Brother Seraphim Mary, who helps me with the postulants. Um, everyone has a part to play. It really is a family, right? Just so, like, just like in a family, I know I learned a lot from my older brother and, you know, from my older siblings, my older sister and my parents, you know. So in the same way in the novitiate, uh, we learn by uh, watching the good example, hopefully the good example, of our older brothers. But it's not just up to others. It's the novice himself or the postulant himself cooperate and actively participate, listen and correspond to what God's trying to do and teach him through all these other um, avenues and all, of, all the other ways that they're, they're formed, through the novice master, the older brothers, and then also God's um, work in the soul. So that kind of gives a little bit of an idea of the who, but the what. Let's turn to the what. What is Carmelite uh, novitiate formation or initial formation? Well, in one way, we could think of it as that period of time early on in the religious life where we leave the world and we become acclimated or used to that spiritual environment of Carmel. And uh, it's, we set aside a, a year of postulancy. Postulancy is the period of, you could say, asking, postulare, the Latin, to ask. In that period of time, you're learning more and you're asking to be fed and, and to go forward in formation. Novitiate, as the word novitiate indicates, it's the part period of time where you're new to the religious life. You take a religious name, but you're not yet in the vows. And so that period of time is for, for two years where we take time to really learn and go more deeply into the vows. And I'll speak about that a little bit later. Now, what's the purpose of this period of formation? Well, formation is ordered towards most fundamentally learning that charism of Our Lady and asking God if we're called to be Carmelites um, after her example. Um, knowledge, we're fed with knowledge and instruction on the Carmelite charism in life. That's the purpose. Um, we grow as well in self-knowledge, seeing um, our own capacity, both our strengths and our weaknesses, um, placing them, you know, before our, you know, they're placed before ourselves pretty vividly by God, and we try to work through the challenges with our novice master. We try to also appreciate our gifts um, in order to, to, be, to grow more and more uh, maturely in our vocation and discern whether it's appropriate to move forward, you know, or whether God's calling us to something else. Um, the goal is God's will, fundamentally. Um, and God willing, vows, but we need to discern that, and the community needs to discern that. So self-knowledge. That self-knowledge and that knowledge about the charism in life is then ordered to 
authentically and gradually discerning with the community the calling that God has placed in our souls, whether it is to the cloistered contemplative life of Carmel that we live, um, the life that we see as a perpetuation of the life of the Blessed Virgin Mary in the church. Pretty cool vocation. Um, but we have to be honest with ourselves whether we can make those sacrifices and whether we have the peace and the joy and so forth. Now let's move on to how. How is this formation accomplished? Um, here, I'd like to kind of speak about two ways in which this how is accomplished. One, we live the life. We become, in a sense, little Carmelites. Okay, we're not in vows yet, but we go through the schedule with the, with the community. Uh, we have our times of mental prayer, our times of liturgical prayer, our times of communal prayer, our times of recreation, our times of work, our times where we, we see and live um, in the family of Carmel. Um, in just an organic kind of way. Um, and this is very formative. Um, it's the, the formation by just the life, the living. Um, it's one of the most fundamental ways that we learn. But also, in a formal way, we're gradually introduced into the life of the monks through formal instruction. In other words, we're not just thrown in France and told to figure out French. No, we're thrown into the life and instructed at the same time on the meaning of the various things in our life the meaning of our charism, what our charism essentially is, and how that's lived out in these things that we're doing along with the monks. And so we have formal instruction, classes, um, which I'll take a, a moment to, to go through the classes, the postulant enters, and uh, we instruct him um, both in um, the, the faith itself. Uh, we go through the catechism, the compendium of the Catholic Church, uh, because our spiritual life is so rooted in the faith, and we don't take for granted in our day and age um, the, the full faith formation. Uh, it's important to go over these things. Actually, it's not even a one-time thing, right? We constantly need to be um, delving into our own faith. And so we take time in postulancy to cover all the bases that the catechism gives us. In novitiate classes, we learn about the rule. We go through the rule of St. Albert, the primary legislative document of our order, which is the fundamental f basis of everything in our life as Carmelites. St. Teresa of, of Jesus called it the rule of Our Lady and Empress, um, which we see it's filled with um, the life of Mary um, that we're called to. Her life of uh, prayer, continual prayer. Her life of diligent work united to her prayer. Her life of obedience, obedience, how clearly that comes out in our rule. The following of Christ um, through uh, submitting to the decisions and the, and the rule of our superiors and so forth, our spiritual fathers in Carmel. Um, we also go through the, the constitutions, which in a way you could say, make concrete for us, in the here and now, what the rule uh, gives us. Then the liturgy, uh, being uh, it's all, uh, so much of our life is immersed in the liturgy, and the liturgy itself is the source and summit of the Christian life, the holy sacrifice of the Mass, is the source and summit. So going through the beauty of the Mass, going through how to pray in the liturgy, how to pray, the different ways to pray the divine office and so forth, and, and to pray the paters for the lay brothers when they pray them apart from choir, and then, of course, we have to talk about just prayer in terms of interior prayer in Carmel. So rich, um, our tradition, uh, there, we need to introduce our young guys to it. So our postulants learn about our holy parents, about St. Therese, our holy parents being St. Teresa of Jesus and St. John of the Cross, about St. Therese, about the progress um, and the path that um, God leads the soul down through um, the life of prayer and virtue. Also, how prayer and virtue are connected. You know, how virtue uh, disposes us to authentically enter into prayer. How it's not some sort of uh, thing that can ever be separated. Our life of prayer has to be integrated with our whole life for it to be authentic. Now, moving on to, uh, uh, well, and a, a few other subjects that kind of go through the whole of our novitiate life from, from postulancy through novitiate. Um, Latin and Gregorian chant. Um, we learn and have regular class in Latin so that we can enter more deeply into the liturgy. We also have our more talented brothers uh, lead the, the, the new guys in how to properly join in our community chant, um, how to go through the scale, do to do, to do um, how to sing the various chants in, in our liturgy, and so forth. Then in novitiate proper, we go a little more deeply. In a sense, that transition from postulancy to novitiate is from going to uh, appreciating our constitutions and charisms towards really 
um, testing and learning about the vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience as lived according to our charism. So we have a history class that goes through our tradition and our history as Carmelites. We have a theology class that uh, one on the virtues, uh, one on the vows. Um, uh, we go through the various uh, cardinal virtues and also the theological virtues and also the, the, the virtues towards which we make vows, the virtues of obedience, chastity, and poverty. And then a vows proper class where we really dive in first to the magisterium's teaching on the vows, understanding what the church expects, canon law, what's required of those who make vows and so forth, and the value of that, theologically speaking for the church, the way in which we're really giving our whole life through the vows, following that direct path that our Lord's given us. Now, moving on from classes, there's other ways in which we do formation a little more, you could say, informally. Um, so, collatios. Those are spiritual conversations the brothers have. So, for example, we might take a passage of St. John of the Cross or St. Teresa and just chew on it. You know, collatio, you think of eating. <laughs> collatio is taking that little, that little bit of a, a small meal to, to nourish the body. And so, these collatios spiritually nourish us um, when we together sit down and um, talk about these topics in kind of a free manner. The, the, the younger monks um, giving insights, the older monks kind of guiding and directing the conversation, um, but in such a way that we're kind of fed, spiritually informed, um, with zeal for our charism. And we seek, uh, the other way, we, we seek to answer questions in formation. The question of before we enter, right, it's like, can I do this? Do I have the capacity to do this? I'm not sure. I'm going to give it a try. I'm going to open my soul to this. I'm going to do my best to follow this grace that God's giving me. And then we discover, is the operative grace present? By operative grace, we mean, has God placed in the soul um, the capacity? Has God placed in the soul the joy in living this life? Has God placed in the soul the grace, in a sense, to more fully become ourselves through the charism? Um, we answer the question by seeing the fruits of peace are born from that. The fruits of joy, the fruits of patience and other virtues, fortitude. And obedience itself, we see it more and more as something that liberates us uh, from, from uh, tendencies to rebel against God. And we feel a, a certain, yeah, freedom and love. Uh, giving, giving ourselves in obedience uh, gives us a certain sense of freely loving God and knowing his will from moment to moment through the duties before us, through the simple things put before us. So ultimately, it is to enter into that apostolate of Our Lady, of mediating grace for souls. This is the ultimate uh, why of our vocation. It's not simply to become holy, uh, to be sanctified. Of course, you know, that is hopefully one of the things that occurs through becoming religious. Um, but ultimately, it's, it's for others, just like Our Lady. Her Immaculate Conception was to bring God into the world for the salvation of all mankind. It wasn't just for her to be on a, a beautiful picture on a holy card. She was so selfless in giving of herself to others. And so ultimately, that's what it should be for us. This is perfectly captured, and I'll probably end with this, with St. Therese. In her autobiography, you might remember the section where she speaks about these great desires in her soul. Her desire to, to be a martyr and witness to Christ with her blood. Her desire to go out and preach like St. Francis Xavier to all the na nations of the world. Her desire to be like a doctor of the church, you know, and to teach the highest truths. And all these desires, she recognized, they were all a little unrealizable, especially in her obscure Carmel in, uh, in France, right? She didn't have, there's, there's no way um, we can do all those things faithfully. Um, but what's deeper is that she realized her, her desires were all realized by becoming love in the heart of the church, her mother. And so that's ultimately our call, to become love in the heart of the church. Um, God bless you, and uh, I'll be praying for everyone watching this video.